Hello and welcome back friends to the Eyes of Old Gaming channel for another game review. I don't always review older games, but when I do, I pick the ones that are well over a decade old and no longer relevant. Jokes aside, today is another older game review, or we can call it a retrospective, whatever way you prefer to look at it. Today we're taking a look at Call of Juarez Bound in Blood. This one was developed by Techland and published by Ubisoft. And this title actually released all the way back in the simpler time of 2009. So what is Call of War as Bound in Blood? And has it held up over all these years? Well the plan is to go over all of this in an objective way so we can take a look at what kind of experience you're getting into. So I can help you answer the most important question in this review series. Is this one worth it for you? Let's find out. Okay, so where is this one set and what's kind of the backdrop for the game? Well, it all begins in 1864 during the American Civil War. And the protagonists, there's actually two of them, are the brothers Ray and Thomas McCall. The brothers are going to start out the game fighting on the side of the Confederate States Army. And the beginning sequence of the game is going to drop you into the middle of a battle. This will serve as kind of a tutorial to get used to the controls and combat in the game. Now due to events that unfold in the game, but I don't want to get too much into it to avoid spoilers. Which, yes, we're still avoiding spoilers for a game released in 2009, because if you're watching this, maybe you haven't played it yet. So anyway, due to events that happen pretty early on, you end up leaving the army with the brothers striking it out on their own. So before we go any further, what games can we give you to compare off the start so you know sort of what to expect in the game? Well, it's part of a franchise, so if you've played the others, this might give you some indication of what you're getting into, with the first game in the series coming out in 2006, and Bound in Blood acting as a kind of a prequel to that game. Going out of the franchise, well, I'm kind of hesitant to give this one as a comparison, but I guess you could say the Red Dead franchise, though this is mainly just due to the western genre, and the games themselves will play out really quite differently, though to be fair there is a similar concentration mechanic to Red Dead's Deadeye. Another western that can feel similar, again mostly due to the setting, is Gun. However, again, this one is mostly just due to sharing the genre. In terms of the feel of the game or maybe the gameplay itself, looking at contemporary shooters with this game might be a good place to start if you're kind of wondering what might have a similar feel to this title. Bound in Blood is going to take place in first person and will feel, for the most part, like a pretty orthodox shooter style. By an orthodox shooter, I just mean that all the stuff that you expect with having a couple of different weapons, being able to switch between, say, a rifle and pistols, and all the typical shooter mechanics of the time are going to make an appearance in this game. Staying in line with its spaghetti western style, you can even dual wield revolvers and enter into what is called a concentration mode, which is going to feel similar to the Red Dead series Dead Eye mechanic. Between some missions, you do have the option to purchase new weapons or take on some optional side missions. Usually these side missions are going to be pretty basic compared to the main storyline missions. If you decide to take on one of these side missions, you can even ride a horse to the mission zone from your load-in area, with the load-in area between missions being sort of like a small town with a gun shop. At the end of many missions, you also end up in a duel with some antagonist, usually whoever was the main antagonist of the mission you're working on. Another major mechanic in the game is the fact that you get to choose which of the brothers you play as, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, which are often used to complete missions slightly differently depending on which you choose.
graphics are going to be fairly typical for the period. For the most part, the gameplay graphics are fine, and really the only thing that took me out of the game was some weird cutscene movements. Of course, you can expect them to be dated by today's standards, but they're not so bad that it's going to feel unplayable. Just dated. Environments look fine, but don't expect too much in the way of variation. For the most part, you're going to be playing in dusty western locations, and a lot of the locations will feel pretty interchangeable. I think that the most unique aspect in this one is the option to choose which brother to play as. Again, it does make a bit of a difference as they have different strengths and abilities, so the mission will play out slightly differently depending on which you choose. It's not going to have major changes to the story though, this is just going to change how individual missions play out, and with their own unique personalities, it does give some interesting flavor to the game, allowing for different perspectives. For those that haven't played the other extremely popular western series, the concentration mode can be a unique addition to the game, which after building up allows you to feel like a true western gunslinger, taking out many enemies with ease. Sound is fine in this one, dialogue is pretty simple, but done well enough. There's not much here in the way that's going to pull you out of the game, but again remember that games from this time are usually more straightforward with writing, sound, and dialogue. I'll play some examples here so you can make up your own mind. Looks like we're stuck. I'll look around. But to get to Devlin, you must first defeat his many hired guns. And you'll pay us for this, hmm? I will give you a share of the treasure. How you even know there is a treasure? My mother was white, but my father is Running River, the great Apache chief. I am not a white dog. Would you like to walk with me? I need to fill this skin with water. Yeah, those babbling brooks here in Arizona can be mighty dangerous, huh? Wouldn't want a big old snake slithering up your skirt. So now that we're done with that objective analysis, let's get into the opinions. I always split up my reviews into two halves, so that those who just want a more spoiler free look at the game, they can check it out and decide from the general concept and gameplay clips if the game is actually interesting to them. That said, I also want to give a more personal touch on how my experience was and if I personally enjoyed it. Keep in mind that whether or not I like the game doesn't mean you will or not. If it looks interesting, give it a try. I should also quickly mention that there's not ratings in my reviews, because ratings are nonsense. One person who thinks a game is a 10 out of 10 will get into a deadlocked argument with someone else who felt it was a 1 out of 10. If you tend to follow mainstream trends and find that your own gaming taste tends to follow what's most popular out there, looking at ratings by many people and getting an average might give you some indication. 
but if you also like those niche games, it's not really going to tell you anything at all. So what did I think of Call of War as Bound in Blood? Did I enjoy it, and am I going to recommend it to my friends watching today? Uh, maybe? I mean, I enjoyed it for what it was, it's just a simple western shooter. The story is fairly basic, the characters are stereotypical, and the gameplay is very standard. I would think that when it released it was probably considered a fairly upper mid tier good game, and there's really nothing wrong with it. If you want a more classic gaming experience, it's gonna deliver. It lacks the pretty cosmetics of newer games and doesn't really go into the same story depth that games tend toward now. We're looking at you, Red Dead. That said, if older graphics don't burn your eyes and the kind of janky cutscenes don't kill your vibes, this might be worth revisiting. Again, I had a mostly enjoyable time with it, but it's really just a mindless shooter. I liked it for when I had a stressful day and didn't want to think anymore. I could just start it up and follow the linear, basic story and run through an almost arcade-like western shooter experience, without much effort. So if you like the classic shooters and are interested in a western setting, this might be a good one to give a go. Otherwise, there's a ton of newer games with prettier graphics and subjectively better stories, and all the bells and whistles of modern games that you can try instead. So I hope you enjoyed this look at Call of Juarez Bound in Blood. Have you played the game already? Did you agree or disagree with my assessment? I would enjoy to read about your takes in the comments section as well. Please like the video if you found it entertaining or informative and also consider subscribing to the channel. I make a variety of gaming content and would be very happy to have you join the community and direct the future of the channel. Otherwise, thank you so much for taking the time to watch today and until next time, take care. Wanna do it quietly? <laughs> right. They're here! They're here! Want a big old snake slithering up your skirt.